Arctic sea ice reflects about 80% of the sun's heat, stabilizing the colder temperature of the ocean. Based on the latest satellite data cited in the December 2007 article, National Aeronautics and Space Administration climate scientist Jay Zawali predicts that nearly all the ice could be gone from the Arctic Ocean by the end of summer 2012. Arctic ice in September 2007 was 23% below previous record low from NASA satellite data and 50% below 1950 levels from ship data. Other records surpassed. Greenland surface ice loss is now 400% greater than 15 years ago. Surface temperatures in the Arctic are the highest in 77 years of record keeping. There is hope. According to James Hansen, top climate scientist at NASA, we have passed tipping points. We have not passed the point of no return. We can still roll things back, but it is going to require a quick turn in direction. Dr. Gerald Dickens, Associate Professor of Earth Science at the prestigious Rice University located in Texas, USA, and Editor-in-Chief of the American Geophysical Union's Paleoceanography Journal, stated in an interview with Supreme Master Television. But it turns out that most of the carbon, about 93% of it, is in the ocean, not trees or in the atmosphere. And so what's happening right now is we're adding a lot of carbon to the atmosphere. And it's coming in much faster than it can go into the biosphere or into the ocean. Um, so that's why the CO2 is going up very, very quickly. According to U.S. University of California, Davis's newspaper, The California Aggie, published on March 4, 2008, U.S. professor says methane from Arctic lakes adds to global warming. In a talk presented at the University of California at Davis, Dr. Katie Walter, a professor of limnology and environmental research at the University of Alaska, stated that methane bubbling up from Arctic lakes is now being released into the atmosphere. This is due to melting of the lake's permafrost layers resulting from climate change. According to Dr. Walter, who has personally conducted Arctic lake research in areas such as Siberia, this phenomena causes further global warming because methane fuels its own production by melting even more permafrost layers once released. Research by Dr. Gregory Riskin at Northwestern University indicates that methane explosions from the ocean caused extinctions of 90% of marine species and 75% of land species 250 million years ago. In his report, methane-driven oceanic eruptions and mass extinctions, he explains how methane gas, which had been trapped in the stagnant waters, was released, leading to the die-off of most marine and land life. Dr. Riskin states, if it happened once, it could happen again.
wanted to ask, if you had a message for the leaders of the world, uh, what would you say to them? I would say to them, use their mighty power to change the diet of the planet and adopt immediately new technology, sustainable energy, and set an example by themselves by becoming a vegetarian or vegan. Use mm -hmm. their mighty power, use their example to set a new diet for the planet, the vegetarian diet. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Master. They first have to be vegetarians, and then they use their power, truly. They could do that by forbidding meat as well, by sniping all the harm that meat would do to humans and the planet. Forbid meat eating, just like forbid smoking cigarettes and drugs. That's also another kind of harmful drug. vegetarianism would be a solution, but do you think it would be enough? No, no, I don't say just vegetarian, you know. Technology has to change. We have ready, we have sustainable energy, we have hybrid cars, we have plastic trees, we have prayer, remember? Vegetarianism is for the long-term benefit, to lessen the karma, to touch the mercy of heaven. If you had a message for the world, what uh, what would it be? That I love them very much. <laughs> 